Hello my soccer universe to the proper review of the first round of the Europa League in 23-24. Please indulge me with my wardrobe choice. I'm still proud of Lusk, but also when I saw the jersey I thought there might be quite a nice color balance up there that I didn't want to really destroy as well with all the gr greens and the blues, which doesn't happen that often. So yeah, there you go. I have to say, when you just look over the results, this was high entertaining, many goals and quite a few interesting results as well. Um, and uh, highfalutin Premier League, yes, Liverpool won at Lusk, West Ham got a win. Did anyone expect Brighton losing at home on their European debut? Well, it's a European debut, but still, I didn't expect to uh, them, them to lose overall, but there were quite a few interesting games and I would say I'll jump right in and I go group by group, but I'll start with the early slot first. Now the first game on the menu here is Last Liverpool. I made an entire video on that game because I, I, I was there. Watch it. I think it gives you all. Uh, Last gave it their all for about 60 minutes, had even a lead. Liverpool in the end was just better and that was that. Uh, in the other group game, Union Saint-Gerasse against Toulouse, I uh, was kind of a little bit more uh, <laughs> sluggy, sluggy in, in, in a way. Toulouse took the lead through a penalty just before the half, uh, but Amura uh, with a nice move got an equalizer which overall uh, reflected the balance of play. I found it interesting Toulouse were playing in purple that's not the interesting part, but the game was played at the Anderlecht Stadium, who of course play in purple, so the away team was in Anderlecht colors. That's interesting. Huge win by Panathinaikos. Huge win by Panathinaikos. Yes, uh, Villarreal is a little bit in a mess at the moment, but still beating Villarreal at home, that's pretty cool. Uh, Ioannidis and Spora, and yes, Panathinaikos did actually also well in Champions League qualifying. So maybe not that much of a surprise, but a big boost and Greek teams, as we will see, and also when we will talk about conference, have been doing overall really, really, really well um, yesterday. Uh, in the parallel game uh, between Ren and Maccabi Haifa, it was all Ren. It was all Ren. Uh, or in the first, first minute blast, a great shot, and the, uh, the second goal also really nice Trüffer. Um, two great, great goals, and then Yildirim Ye makes it a uh, third, third one to give Stad Ren already the early group uh, lead. Servet, yeah, were outplayed by Slavia Prague at home. I have to say those Slavia Prague jerseys did not look good, but they look good on the, on the field, definitely a step above uh, a decent Swiss team. So uh, there you go. And in the same group, Roma also, I mean, controlled the game, took the lead. I mean, it was a Paredes shot, but in, in the end it was uh, deflected in. Uh, through Kiki. Uh, then, like Roma tends to do, sometimes landing a little bit loose, Tovar could equalize, but a really nice move over Cristante and Lukaku. I mean, it didn't look all that fluid, but when you watch it in replay, it was actually quite, quite a nice move. Um, gets them uh, the go-ahead goal and Roma win that game. Then Leverkusen are just at their... They are at the moment a team that's irresistible to watch. And I'm not a Leverkusen fan, but that's a fun team team to watch. Florian Wirtz, uh, a lobby of the goalie, then the nice move, Schaka to Adli. Also, a really nice finish, then Boniface and Hoffmann, uh, again, within four minutes. I mean, uh, the two the goals came in kind of short spurs, but it was everything, and Hecken could not handle, handle them. And uh, Karabakh, in, in the other game, uh, dominated the game, was always failing to convert in the end, Leandro Andrad. Uh, makes it 1-0 for Karabakh. So that ends the early uh, slot in the late slot. And uh, a little bit of that I saw live. Olympiakos against Freiburg was actually quite a great game uh, with many mistakes at the beginning. And actually, Olympiakos probably should have taken the league early, but it was then Sala who gave them a league. Um, the lead, Freiburg. Uh, Al Kabi equalizes, but just before they have Grifo, who, may, uh, who made a mistake already uh, on the equalizing goal, converts a penalty in deep, 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 deep stoppage time. El Cabido again uh, gets the equalizer in the 75th, and at that moment, uh, Olympiacos had already the uh, momentum going forward. But then Philip, uh, with a shot, 
Oh, from the edge of the, of the box, give Gibson the lead and uh, late on Jovetic cannot get another equalizer. So that was a really hard fought win for Freiburg there. West Ham, of course, down dominated the game, but also found themselves like Liverpool, one nil down, but this time early in the second half through Stanic. Uh, but then uh, Mohamed Kudus scores a brace and Suchek in the 82nd uh, set West Ham to a deserved win. Probably the game of the evening was in Amsterdam, and that was a really, really exciting one. Um, it looked all going well for Ajax. We had a 2 0 lead through Forbes and Berghuis after 20, 20 minutes. But very uh, quickly thereafter, um, Jonathan Klaus actually pulled one back, and then uh, Pierre Obama Young. Do you remember him? Yes. He hasn't scored in Liga yet, but in Europe he does, and he gets the equalizer. Still, Ajax not deterred. Can Taylor, 52nd minute, give Ajax the lead again? And uh, Ajax looked at that moment to be on the better side until Bjemrik um, Abayang gets another in, an e equalizer. And then even as they were uh, pushing for the equalizer, uh, later on was got a yellow red, but you know, uh, there was already, already, already stoppage time. But in the hipsters group, this was a hipster result. I mean, 3-3 three, three, uh, was high entertainment, Good fun. Uh, both teams probably close to having a win at one point. In the end, it's a 3-3 draw. And then uh, I think the upset of, of the is Ike going to the Amex and beating Brighton. High-flying Brighton. I mean, I honestly I have not seen now the lineup, but you know, both uh, goals were scored by Joao Pedro, who has been playing there. Um, Ike had twice the lead, João Pedro twice per, via penalty. A penalty that was initially not, not given could equalize, but at a big, uh, big surprising result. Ike, like I said, Ike pull off the upset, 3 2 away from home, another great result for a Greek team. Then, uh, in a rather tight group and a tight contest, uh, Rangers will themselves to win. I mean, if you see the winning goal, it is about as British as it can get with everyone pushing, 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 then the ball falls here and there, tackle, da, 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 and it goes in, in internet. A uh, game that could have gone probably either way, but the Rangers were a little bit more determined to get that win. Uh, the parallel game was a little bit more and more exciting. Um, Kokorin. I have not heard him in a long, long while since when our Russians are around to play. <laughs> I mean, I guess I uh, shouldn't say much, but he gives um, Aris a lead through a penalty. However, Krejci, with two goals within five minutes, 20th and 25th, uh, turns the game, game around and Wittig late in the uh, mid-second half. Uh, also 3-1 and then only the 9th of me, Babitska. Uh, pulls one back and so Sparta get also win. That means both Prague teams have gotten, gotten a win, which is actually fun because both park teams I have in my collection at the beginning you so saw they're even hanging on the wall here on the side. Uh, Atalanta against Rakov was the expected win and not much more. Uh, however, you know, you have Teke Teke Delare, CDK, who was a flop at Milan. He scores again with a nice glancing header. And then Ederson, who had just came, came on a few uh, many minutes before after Ruggeri assist, also a header, and it is all a deserved win overall. Um, and then we had Sturm Graz against Sporting. First time that Sporting win in Austria. That tells you everything you know about how much Austrians love sports, uh, Sporting, and shame on Sturm Graz for that. But to be fair, all fun aside, Sporting were the better team on that one. Created more, had more of the game. Uh, Sturm, though, uh, as usual, very um, hard out, fighting hard, were in the game. Even took a lead in the 50th meter when Akitish Willi shot, hits the um, upright, and the ball falls to William Bögen, uh, Bögen and uh, who puts it into the net. And at that point, I really, everyone really thought that they might hang on because Sturm Golis Kerpen had a, a real great game, had some great saves. Until he didn't. Uh, he wanted to catch a ball when he should have probably just used uh, the, the fists and the ball falls to Giocares uh, together with Afanko. He gets a touch on it and both crash into the upright. It's 1-1 one, one, and then a few uh, few minutes later the amount uh, we, we with shot and again it was deflected. That's why the goal did, 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 didn't look good. It's all, and then it's 2-1 for Sporting. Overall a disappointing result for Sturm. Who? Let's be clear. Sporting Pro on the balance of the play deserved that win. 
However, uh, if you take the lead and you concede two goals in the last 15 minutes, then you're always looking, yeah, there could have been more in there. And so, yeah, both Austrian teams did do their best. In the end, it was not good enough. You met superior opposition. Uh, I'll give you here the Kirker end without commenting too much on it. Uh, the only thing I want to mention is 3.25 goals on average. That's more than the Champions League. We had quite some nice games in there and you know at the moment the standings don't uh tell us much uh the favorites has also not changed too much brighton lost the spot to roma liverpool still the overwhelming favorites to win that competition i think the only competition that could come really in there is potentially leverkusen i would not underestimate them i don't think i mean roma is still high high flying because of rating but i actually think Lever leverkusen is a competition i don't know quite about brighton yet but i think uh teams that drop down from the champions league and there are quite a few in this um uh, top 20s uh, already in here because it's still very much you know they, they might fall in and you see for instance real madrid who will not make it as a 13 percent chance of them making it in, into playoff uh they are also in there so take it for what, it, for, for, for what you want and then we finish with the upcoming mat matches I think uh, Marseille against Brighton is definitely one to look out for the same thing goes for Sporting against Atalanta I think that's a really interesting one Freiburg against West Ham don't underestimate I of course will be watching Toulouse last most people will watch Liverpool against Union Saint-Julois uh, we are like a start I mean uh, Spain against France always interesting overall so yeah that's it from me from the Europa League uh, lab. Let me know what you thought about the games yesterday in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.